through the whole of the UCAS process. So I'm going to <clears throat> start presenting and uh, we'll get started promptly so that hopefully I'll do my best to try and fit this into an hour. Uh, but there's quite a lot of information to get through. So I'm going to get started straight away. This is recorded on, uh, I'm going to be posted on the school website. Um, so if you want to refer back to anything, you can, um, you can find it on there. It should be on there in the next few days. Uh, can I just remind people to switch off their cameras, please, because this is being recorded. And um, we'll get started straight away. So we are should be up and running. Right, okay, good. So um as you can see, the whole process starts now, and um this is something we're really trying to impress upon the students because this year we're starting the process earlier than we have done in the past. And we're doing this so that um, students can do more research over the summer and they can come back into year 13 uh, with their choices made and have the information they need to make their decisions about which courses to apply to. Um, so they're going to get information, uh, their UCAS grades, they're going to get that um, earlier than they have done in the past so that they can uh, start looking at their choices of universities. So why should they consider um, applying to university? Well, um, firstly, it increases earning potential for uh, the average student coming out of university. They will be earning in the region of £10,000 a year more than uh, had they not been to university. And over a um, working career, for uh, a uh, female, they are going to, uh, sorry, for a male, they're going to earn uh, in the region of £250,000 more over their career. And for a woman, it will be in the region of £170,000 more over their career. Um, also, it's an opportunity to develop and learn. It's not just about uh, going to uh, make more money. It's uh, learning for learning's sake to some extent and um, making students fulfill their potential. They're also going to gain transferable skills, such as uh, presenting to an audience, and they'll also develop skills in research and analysis, which will be uh, seen as assets by future employers. Also, they will have uh, new personal ex experiences. It's not just an academic experience. So there's obviously the social aspect. Uh, students will get the uh, experience of living away from home and for the first time they will be experiencing self-sufficiency to some extent. So that's why they should consider university. Why might they not? Um, first of all, it will be a delay to earning and some students' personal situations mean that uh, they would rather not be in a, a situation where they can't start er earning yet. Um, and one thing I will say on that point is that it is possible to study and work. And I will use my personal experience of my son, who's in the last year of his university course uh, at a Russell Group University, and he's currently working 33 hours a week. So it is possible to study and work if finances are an issue. Also, um, as I'm sure you're well aware, it's uh, a pressure on parents' finances. Now, if parents are going to con contribute to their uh, sons and daughters' upkeep, then it can be an expensive process. There are also long-term financial considerations to make. Now, uh, a lot of students worry about the um, student loan and how much they're going to owe when they finish university. And um, they don't start paying until they anything on their student loan until they uh, start earning just below £28,000 a year. And when they do hit £28,000 a year, they will be paying £5 per calendar month towards their student loan. So um, uh, anything they earn over the threshold, uh, they pay 9% of their wages towards the student loan company. So it comes out basically like a tax. 
And um, so give you an example, if they were on a starting salary of £33,000 uh, as a graduate, they would be paying £42 per calendar month. So it isn't a huge expense. Uh, obviously, the more they earn, the more they, more they pay, but they'll be in a, a position to do so. Um, so I do usually in, encourage students to, or discourage students from not applying to university on this basis, um, because the, the repayments are fairly small. Some students may feel that they've uh, reached their threshold of academia for the time being and may be uh, suffering from academic fatigue. Uh, and in this situation, it's a good idea that students might consider a gap year. Um, there are different ways that they can defer entry. Uh, if they decide to defer entry when they put their application in, they have to give some explanation in their personal statement, which I'll be talking about later, about what they're going to do in their gap year. But there are other ways of doing it as well. So they can wait until they've got their offers. And um, once they've got their offers, they can then contact the university and tell them that they are choosing to defer. Um, I'm yet to, to experience a uh, university that has turned down a student in this situation. That is apart from students who are uh, what we call the early applicants. So those applying to Oxford and Cambridge, uh, those applying to do medicine, dentistry and uh, vet med. So uh, that is not the way you would do it for that. So there are some exceptions. Um, so that's something they really may want to consider. Also, if they come uh, decide that they want to take a gap year uh, and they want to apply within the next year, uh, so the next year's cycle or even up to two years later, they just get in touch with me here and uh, I will help them with their application just as though they were a student and they will get support with their personal statements and their application. So uh, we do continue to support them even after they've left. Students may want to consider alternatives to um, going to university. You can find a lot of um, good information on this website here. Um, lots of information about different apprenticeships that are available. Uh, there are also degree apprenticeships on there, which are quite attractive to some students because um, they will, uh, while studying, they'll also be working and they'll get paid for that work and they also have their fees paid. So that's quite an interesting um, avenue to explore. And like I say, if you go onto that website, there's lots of information there about it. Now, going back to if you are going to go to university. So, which course? This is undoubtedly the most important decision that the students will make in their application. Choosing the wrong course is the most common reason for a student dropping out of university. And that can be uh, an expensive um, decision to make because uh, you will still get paid, uh, charged fees. If you drop out in the first term, then you'll get charged for that first term. If you drop out after Christmas, you will pay the whole year's tuition fees, which uh, is in the region of 9,000 pounds. So it's really important that students you, uh, choose the right course. It makes sense for students, students to choose something that interests them and they're good at something they're going to be studying for three years upwards and um, doing something that they're good at, something they interest, makes it all a lot easier. There's no point doing something that they're not interested in or something that they find difficult because it's going to be a struggle for three years or more. So students uh, should, when they're considering what course to take, um, should think about different uh, influences, whether it's something they're studying because they enjoy it, or whether it is a view to go into a particular career. Now, uh, a lot of courses do not necessarily lead you into a particular career, and there are lots of graduate schemes in the, uh, the world of work set up by companies to take on graduates. Um, and it could be something that's completely unrelated to their degree. So when um, when I was working in London, I knew people who worked in the city uh, and were traders in, in the city. And they had one person springs to mind who had done a degree in archaeology. So completely unrelated because having a degree tells an employer that a student is a, of a certain um, intellectual level and also is able to work um, under their own esteem without people 
Um, not like at school where you have heads of year like me stand, uh, making sure that work gets done. It is down to them. Uh, although there is obviously student, uh, student support in place, the onus is on the student. So um, they don't necessarily have to have a degree in an area that they want to study in. In choosing their course, they may want to, students may want to choose more than one subject. And when they do that, they should be mindful of the terms with and and. So if they're studying two subjects at degree, and it is, uh, say for example, I did um, Spanish and English literature. Um, I did Spanish and English literature, which means that the Eng English side of things is a minor subject. If you are studying two subjects and it says with, then they are of equal weighting. When the students are choosing their course, they should do their research, and I'll come on to that in a minute, um, and look into how the uh, how much contact time they'll have whilst at university. They also want to consider how it will be taught. Uh, is it going to be practical and hands-on, or is it going to be theoretical? Students also need to consider how it will be assessed. So whether uh, it's going to be a continuous... Students should also look into student satisfaction and employment rates. Uh, there are two websites that I'll refer to later, Unifrog and What Uni, which are very good for this. Um, there's lots of information there about student satisfaction and employment rates. Also, students may want to consider a, a course with a year in industry. This can be a very good idea in certain fields because it gives students good practical experience. But it offers, also offers them a foot in the, the door for their first job after university. So it's not unheard of for students to go back to work for the company that they did their uh, year in industry with. And you can see there's a couple of links there uh, that can, students can use um, to help if they don't know what they want to study. There's a couple of links there to the What Uni site uh, that will give them some information on how they can go about making a decision given it is such an important one. Okay, so how do they decide which university to go to, uh, to apply to? First of all, they need to consider what their entry requirements are. And um, so student, uh, universities will require students to achieve certain grades or have certain grades in their UCAS predicted grades. Uh, and I'll give you more information on that later. So students need to make sure that they make realistic applications and the UCAS grades will shape which universities they can choose. So they should consider location, um, distance from home and transport so that they can come home and give you their washing. Um, and uh, also there's something that they, they need to consider which, um, if I'm honest, I, I've had some criticism from students, ex-students, who said, you never told us university was going to be so tough. Um, and it's something that I've spoken to the year group about, and they need to realise that it can be hard. Moving away from home and living on their own is something they've not done before, and it, it can be a good idea to be within relatively close distance to home so that they can come home and uh, obviously have family support. Um, and I'll come back to that later. They need to consider what type of university they uh, would like to go to. So uh, a campus university is where uh, it's almost like a student village, often on the outskirts of towns, um, and it is a student bubble. All the students rather live in a town or city. Now this obviously is down to an individual's tastes uh, and what they think suits them. Uh, so that really brings up the issue of how important it is to do their research and go and do some visits as well. Universities are now opening up for personal visits rather than doing open days, uh, not solely online. So um, that will be beneficial for students. They want to consider what facilities are available, um, especially for technical subjects. And they want to consider the, what, what's available in uh, facilities there. They want to uh, find out about the teaching. Uh, facilities, what sports facilities there are might be very important for some and obviously you know, the social aspect as well, what social facilities they have. They should also do their research into accommodation. Most students will be in halls for the first year and um, they 
need to look into the product that they uh, have available and how much it is. And it is really worth doing research here. So um, some people might presume that a, a room with a, an ensuite is automatically going to be um, more expensive than one without. But if you do your research, you'll find that some universities have uh, ensuite accommodation that is cheaper than some of their accommodation that isn't ensuite. So it really is worth doing the um, research so that you can find out this information. As I mentioned earlier, student satisfaction, what uni is particularly good for that? So they should do their research there. And then also if students have particular needs, uh, they should really look into what student support is available, okay? Because um, that uh, may vary from one uni to another. And uh, if you have particular needs, then uh, that's something that is well worth uh, researching. So, as I mentioned, Unifrog and what uni? Uh, over the course of this week and also the week after half term, students are going to the library with Miss Borg for uh, an hour training on Unifrog so that they can um, look into uh, how to use that as a tool to do their research into universities and courses. <clears throat> also, um, I did give them a brief demonstration of what uni. Uh, when we did uh, an abridged version of this presentation a couple of weeks ago. So they should know how to, to use that, but they will get some um, reminders on that during the course of the year. Students might also want to consider whether they want to study uh, at home or go abroad. Now, obviously, there are some um, factors that have made this a different prospect in the last few years. Um, so Brexit has obviously had an impact on studying in Europe and also the, the pandemic. So that's something that has uh, obviously had uh, an impact on students studying abroad. But these are some of the things they might want to consider um, because tuition fees may vary and also it may be different uh, way of, of paying for it. So there may not be student loans available. Uh, and uh, there are other things that you've got to consider, um, such as visas. Language um, is very important. And <clears throat> nowadays also, they will have to look into COVID-related regulations as well. <clears throat> if you want to get uh, more advice on uh, different universities and how to choose which one to go to, uh, I'd say that first of all, um, if you're going to look at university league tables, look at more than one because they are all different. And uh, I wouldn't advise you just go and take one as being gospel. Uh, and I would say the best thing to do is look at several. <clears throat> if you Google university league tables, you will find a whole list comes up. But there's also some uh, independent information available to you at those uh, websites, uh, which you'll be able to get off of this presentation once it's on the, um, once it's on the web school website afterwards. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have to have a drink. Students shouldn't rule out new universities. Um, sometimes uh, they get a bit of a bad rap because, because they're new and they haven't yet got uh, a, a long-standing reputation. But for many subjects, they do offer some excellent teaching and uh, facilities. So do consider looking into new universities. So um, there's a, a group of universities that are uh, called the Russell Group, you may have heard of them, and uh, they are uh, amongst the higher tariff universities and uh, carry quite high status. And um, these are sort of more traditional uh, older universities, which um, it does, it does uh, open up a lot of doors if you do go to the Russell Group, but you will find if you look at different uh, university league tables that you don't necessarily find all the Russell Group uh, universities in the top uh, echelons. Uh, so that it's not necessarily the case that they are the best universities. Also, it depends what course you're studying. You'll find that some universities are specialised in, in certain courses. If you're interested in finding out more about the Russell Group, then go to their, their website there and um, you'll get information 
regarding what is required, uh, what subjects are required to study certain degree courses. And then there's another uh, university guide there with more information about where to apply to. You can see there, though, that uh, if students do go to um, Russell Group universities, it will increase their earning capacity further uh, and their earning potential. So that is something that uh, is worth considering. And you can see um, the uh, pink ones are the Russell Group universities. And uh, obviously, they are uh, more, uh, they're going to earn more if they, they go to these universities. OK, um, so there's some more websites there that are good for um, some research into universities. Uh, like I said, it's well worth um, looking at different uh, university guides and uh, don't just stick to one if you really want to get uh, a broad sense of uh, what is going on in the universities in the UK. Right, we're going to have a look now at the application process. So, Apply is the uh, UKS application system. This is completed online, there's a secure login and um, students can work uh, on their application from any device that they have. So you know, they can do it on their phone, PC. Uh, I'm yet to see someone do it on their watch, but I, I doubt it will be long before that's happening as well. Um, the UCAS referee, so I'll be one of their referees, can check their, their progress at any stage. And uh, once the application has been completed, it's sent online to UCAS. So um, the part of the apply uh, system is UCAS track, and they can track the application process through that. Uh, I will uh, reiterate the point that uh, the UCAS form is the responsibility of the student. We will advise them, but what goes on the form is ultimately up to the student. So in the application, they get to choose five universities, and uh, these universities do not see what other universities the student has applied to. Neither are, uh, are these choices ranked. So they're just put in and they come up on the uh, application form alphabetically and um, there is no ranking, okay? Um, payment for the uh, UCAS application uh, is done online by debit or credit card. And for one application, it's 22 pounds and 20, uh, this is for next year and, uh, sorry, for this year, so it will probably go up slightly. Uh, and £26.50 uh, for up to five applications. So they choose five um, universities and unless they're applying to do medicine, vet med or dentistry, in which case they only apply to four. They apply to four medicine, vet med or dentistry courses, but then they choose one other course. So they may choose something uh, such as biomedical science uh, as a backup because it's, they're so competitive, it's, um, it's a good idea for them to have a backup. Also, if they don't get into medicine via that route, with something like biomedical science, they could uh, do a three-year degree in that, and then they could transfer onto a medicine course later. Okay, so, um, UCAS grades. These are the grades that are awarded to students um, on their application. And uh, these are what the universities will look at uh, with regard to their uh, course requirements. So you may get a course that requires a student to have three Bs in their UCAS grades. And um, these grades are based mostly on students' performance in, um, in the summer of this year. And that was explained to them right from the beginning of term. And uh, I discussed this in the uh, welcome to sixth form presentation um, earlier in the year. Um, so that's the, the main basis is for their summer exams. But work, through, work throughout the year will be taken into consideration, uh, but the exams take precedence. Now, we do often have students come to us and say, oh, but I want an A or I need an A star to get onto a, a certain course. Um, their applications must be realistic and overinflated UCAS grades are de detrimental to students and not beneficial. So we could, we could um, predict that all students will get three A stars, but it's not gonna do them in, any good if they apply to courses with that sort of tariff and they don't achieve them. So it's really important that we 
we give them realistic UCAS grades and uh, also we need to maintain credibility as an institution. So when a university sees that, uh, that we have awarded say three Bs to a student um, for their UCAS grades, the university knows that we have a reputation for being realistic in our UCAS grades and not overinflating them. So students must make sure that they, they apply for a wide range of, of universities, not just those uh, that require uh, the highest grades. They need to make sure that they, they choose uh, a couple of universities with a lower tariff in case um, they don't achieve their UCAS grades. And uh, this is particularly true if they're uh, applying to um, particularly competitive courses. So um, this, is, this is really something that they, they need to, uh, to take into account. We will be giving more guidance on this later on in the year, and I'll come on to that a bit later, what's, what will be happening later in the year. Students will also uh, be required for certain courses to sit additional tests. So there are extra tests for medicine, vet med, dentistry and law, and also for some mathematics degrees. Also, universities now, a lot of universities have their own admissions tests. So um, you can see there that um, Oxford and Cambridge have additional tests. So you've got uh, the um, maths, history, politics, uh, English, and um, there, are, there are a lot more uh, additional tests these days than there, there were uh, up until recently. And it does give the university a chance to see uh, exactly what a student is like uh, rather than just going by their, um, their UCAS grades. Um, so, and also some universities have admissions tests or, and, or require portfolios to be produced for things such as architecture. Um, Again, down the bottom, it is the student's responsibility to ensure they are registered for any additional tests. Um, we will uh, be able to have them sit some of those tests here, in fact, most of them, but they do have to make sure that they take the responsibility for, um, for registering for these tests. Information for that will be given later. Okay, looking at the UCAS form, um, there are the different sections that they need to complete and um, so personal details, university and course choices we discussed, qualifications, so they put their, um, their GCSEs in there, uh, any jobs that they've done, work experience, their personal statement, which I'll come on to in great depth in a minute, um, and there'll be reference from school, and their predicted grades, predicted UCAS grades will go on there as well. These days, most universities don't interview so the UCAS form is uh, pretty much everything that they have to go by. So the process. The um, UCAS exams are from the 6th to the 15th of June this year. And um, like I said, that will be the, the real integral uh, factor that shapes their UCAS grades. So they finish on the 15th of June. On the 17th of June, we will be holding a UCAS day for them. And uh, they'll be taken off timetable and they'll be uh, going into different workshops delivered by myself and the other uh, UCAS ref referees. And that will be uh, giving them advice on the application process and how to write a personal statement. On the 6th of July, they'll get their UCAS exam results and they'll also then find out their UCAS grades. And this is what has changed this year. So in the past, they wouldn't have got their UCAS grades until they came back in September. But if we provide them uh, earlier, then students can do their research into uh, different universities over the summer rather than uh, do research over the summer without being fully informed about what their UCAS grades are going to be. So I think this, this move is going to benefit them a great deal. And from July to September, they should be working on their application so that the form is as ready as early as possible in year 13. Um, I'll come back to the importance of getting their application in early um, later on, uh, because it, it really is a first come first serve uh, situation. And they'll get uh, towards the end of the year after they have had their UCAS days, there will be a couple of tutorial sessions uh, dealing with the application as well. 
Um, UCAS forms, once they've completed it, it can take two to three weeks to, to have everything completed um, and to get them through the pipeline and the application to be sent. So it is uh, really important that they don't leave it to the last minute because obviously we cannot do everyone um, all at the same time. So it has to be spread out over the um, autumn term. So once um, they put their application in, they'll hear back from universities with uh, hopefully lots of offers uh, and that correspondence will be coming through <coughs> UCAS. There could be a chance that they'll be called for an interview or an applicant day, um, or depending on what sort of course it is, it is uh, an audition or uh, they have to submit a portfolio. Offers are usually based on them achieving particular grades. Uh, now, each grade at A level uh, carries a different value to, in the UCAS system. So an A star is worth 56 points, an A is 48, a B is 40, and then it goes down in increments of eight, going down to an E grade, which is worth 16. Um, and most universities will they will be based on them achieving particular grades, or it could be that they are offered a place uh, on the basis of how many UCAS points they have achieved. They'll be able to follow this, uh, the progress of this on, online on UCAS track, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then once they have received the offers, they will then, um, out of the, the ones that have offered them a place, they will choose two courses to accept. One will be a firm acceptance and the other one will be an insurance acceptance. So the, the way that this should be done is that the firm uh, choice should be of a higher tariff than the, uh, the insurance offer. So it's a backup. If they don't get their firm choice, then they should hopefully achieve the grades they need to get into their insurance choice. If by any chance uh, students fail to meet the uh, offers uh, and they, they don't have any uh, offers from university and they only get rejections, there are two systems in place. There's extra and, and there's clear. Extra happens during the course of the year um, and then clearing happens once results come out uh, and students will be given more information about this later. If uh, they do manage to surpass their, uh, the grades that they were needed to get for the courses they'd applied to, then they can effectively upgrade with a, a new system. It's only been around for a few years um, called UCAS Adjustment, uh, and that is available to students. Okay, coming on to the personal statement. This is um, probably the part of the application that gives the student um, the, the, the biggest headache. And it is, from the student's point of view, besides the um, besides the reference from the school, it's the most important section of the form. The personal statement um, should have an academic fo focus and it's essential that the student has chosen their course before they write their personal statement because the personal statement is directly related to the course. They can't write a one-size-fits-all personal statement, so they need to decide on what course they want to do and then they can write their personal statement. Um, in the statement, they need to show their enthusiasm uh, as well as aptitude and suitability for the course. Uh, they want students who are committed to the subject they've chosen to study uh, and students that they, they uh, can see have uh, a real passion for that subject. They'll need to be able to discuss uh, in some detail in their personal statements uh, further reading and research that they've done and work experience uh, that they've they've. Uh, done relating to the course. Now, uh, it has been quite difficult for some students um, to get good work experience in particular fields during the pandemic, but it is changing now, so hopefully um, that will be something that uh, won't continue much longer. Personal statement is really uh, a chance for students to sell themselves, and sometimes they, they don't feel very um, comfortable with bragging in their statement, but that is exactly what they should be doing. Um, and to make sure that they, they get the right tone, we will give them plenty of guidance. Their first draft will be due when we come back in September. Their first draft goes to their form tutor who will check it for uh, to language, make sure it reads well. And then after that, it will go to their UCAS referee. So the UCAS referee will see one draft um, and give them feedback on that draft. 
and then the student will write a second draft the referee will see that give further feedback and guidance and then um, that is as much uh, involvement as uh, the referee has it's then down to the student to act on the advice that's been given it's called a personal statement so ultimately it's down to the student what they want to include and what um, advice they want to take on board so working towards the personal statement what can students be doing now well, they should be starting doing further reading and research uh, as soon as they have made the decision of what um, course they'd like to study. This is really an important aspect of the personal statement and um, it's something that will embellish their statement and make them stand out uh, against other students in what is a, is a highly competitive process. They also need to uh, be getting some relevant work experience if they can, if it's the, relevant to a course, um, so that they can also discuss what they did and learnt on their work experience in their personal statement. Students can be um, taking uh, part in doing MOOCs, which are massive online open courses. Um, students can just, if they just Google MOOC, they will find uh, lots of um, providers that they can do those through. Students should also be um, attending courses, workshops, seminars and lectures. A lot of these are obviously going to be online at the moment. Uh, every week I send out lots of information to students on, on a wide range of different courses and workshops that they can uh, attend. A lot of these are free. Um, there are others that you have to pay for as well. Um, but um, I really do um, strongly advise that students uh, do attend some of these because it, it does embellish the personal statements. And this is something that I do tell students that it's very easy for a, a university admissions tutor to tell whether a personal statement is something that has, uh, a student has been working towards for a long period of time or one that has been um, knocked together in, in, um, in a relatively short period of time. So, um, for the personal statements, they need to make sure they have the right experience, reading and focus for the course that they're applying for. Generally speaking, they need to get on with their application um, and um, their personal statement. They can't drag their heels on this. Uh, as I said earlier, the, it is basically a first come, first serve system. Every course will have a finite uh, number of offers that will be made to students. And once all those students have, um, uh, once all those offers have been given out to students, they don't give out any more. So um, it's really important that they, they move quickly. And it's for this reason that we have our own internal deadline, which is earlier than the UCAS deadline, which all students will be working towards. Um, students should consider applying to summer schools. Uh, information about some of these has already gone out and um, there will be more coming out uh, in due course. Students should be attending open days. Um, and they then can find out what sort of university suits them. Students also need to be realistic um, and make sure that they are looking at applying for courses that are um, achievable. So that the, the course requirements are uh, grades that they are likely to achieve. So, next steps at this point. Um, obviously, personal statement preparation is vitally important. They should be doing their research into different university courses uh, and uh, different institutions. We've got the UCAS day coming up on the 17th of June and um, they should be uh, looking at university open days in June. They've got their exams coming up uh, and then their UCAS grades. So I, I have really uh, emphasised this to the year group over the course of the year, how important these UCAS exams are in June. Okay, so they really need to take these seriously uh, and uh, they will shape the UCAS grades that they are awarded. For early applicants, there will be a deadline for all applications, and this is not a, a manwards deadline, this is a, a deadline set by UCAS and the institutions, 
that they need to have their application in by the 15th of October. And there's been some support given already to those students and that will be ongoing throughout the year. And then finally, I did mention there is a, an internal deadline. Um, all applications will be completed by all students by the 25th of November. Um, the, um, the UCAS deadline is in January, but um, we don't want students to leave it until the end and find out that all the offers have been given out. Um, I, I can think of students going back some years ago before we had this internal deadline, straight A students getting no offers. And the reason was because they left it so late. So that is why we have the uh, internal deadline. And that brings us to an end. Um, got through that remarkably quicker than I thought I would. Um, if you want to refer back to any of this information, then this uh, presentation will be posted on um, the school website for you to go back and get some of that information. A lot of what uh, I uh, have said this evening and uh, a very similar presentation has already been shared with students and um, they have links to a lot of those websites. But as, uh, I will post both, both the um, Google Pages um, presentation as well as the recording so that you can um, click on some of those links. But if you have any questions, obviously this is not really the, um, the best forum for uh, questions um, given the nature of um, online meetings. So if you do have any questions, please email me. That's my email address there, m.steadman at srms.kent.sch.uk. So, um, I hope you found this evening informative and useful. Um, if uh, you need have any questions, then please uh, do drop me an email. You can also, uh, it will be by the end of the week, hopefully that the, um, the presentation will be online. But I uh, do want you to rest assured that we will give your uh, sons and daughters lots of support throughout the whole process and uh, plenty of guidance. And if they ever have questions about anything relating to UCAS, they can come and find me in my office at the Grange or they can email me and um, I'm always going to be here to help them through the process. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in person at some point soon. Okay, thanks and good night.